So we've cloned the project into our documents folder. Let's go there and check this out. So here is documents, and then here is the DBC demo. And uh, so here's the um, overall structure of the uh, project. Um, this thing consists of uh, um, two libraries. Uh, one library uh, deals with uh, exception-enabled assertions. One library deals with social security numbers, the main executable uh, that will do a payroll run, and another executable uh, to um, or another directory that contains the unit tests, which we'll talk about later. Um, so um, let's look at, uh, before we load this into, C, into a C line, uh, remember that uh, C line uses CMake, and CMake itself uses a file named CMakeLists.txt, the extension here is hidden, um, to uh, configure the project. And uh, so this is uh, what we see here. So uh, this is our CMakeLists file. And um, so there are a couple of things uh, that we see that uh, we require C++11 standard. Uh, there is an option to enable testing, which by default is not enabled. So uh, this is uh, uh, what we want. We enable uh, compiler error flags um, to get uh, good information about what's going wrong. And uh, then uh, there's this line here that says, uh, um, include uh, CMake local TXT optional. Uh, and then uh, we go on and uh, try to find uh, QT, more particularly the test uh, module of QT and boost. And we've installed and prepared these, but uh, since there are no default locations for these kind of things on Windows, uh, this system can use it and help. Um, and uh, we can either uh, run CMake uh, CMake GUI uh, interactively and manually to, to do this, but we'll like, we let um, um, CLine take care of that. But this is where the CMake local.txt file comes in because we can use this to uh, give hints to the installation locations of Qt and Boost on a given system without actually having that information because it differs from system to system without having that information uh, live in the uh, source code repository. So what we'll have to do now is really create this CMake local.txt file. And so I'm going to do this here and say uh, file um, new. And uh, now we have the, uh, uh, and we're going to save this as uh, CMake local.txt. Then we have to uh, give this thing two hints and we can do this by setting CMake variables. So uh, I'm going to write set to set this. The first one is boost. So I want to set the boost root variable. Um, and uh, since uh, the path that comes now contains spaces, we'll have to quote it. Um, so it lives then, uh, uh, of course, on the C drive. Um, and uh, since this is a cross-platform tool, uh, it will always use forward slashes rather than backslashes to uh, as the uh, directory uh, of the path separator. So this is going to be program files. And then um, we named the uh, subdirectory boost and then the particular version of boost that we installed, which was boost 172.0. And uh, that's the first variable. And now we're going to do pretty much the same thing for Qt. So here we're going to see, we, uh, OK, um, Qt comes with its own uh, set of CMake modules, so we just have to tell um, CMake to look for those. And we do this here by actually setting the variable CMake prefix path. And we're going to set this to C QT, and we are at 5.14.1. And then um, it uh, will expect the uh, uh, thing now in min GW uh, 73 underscore 64. And uh, so those are our two variables uh, that we need to set to uh, give uh, CMake and CLine uh, a hint on where these two dependencies live. And uh, now we can save this as uh, in our documents directory as a text file, yes. And the file name is going to be CMake local. Dot txt 
and that's this. So uh, closing this, we now see we have CMake lists and the CMake local file with the hints, and we are ready to um, open this project up with CLine. So I'm going to bring up CLine now. Uh, this is under chat rights right here. C line. And the beauty of C line now is that it will, uh, we just pointed to the uh, top left directory that contains the CMake list file, and C line will automatically configure the system. So let's uh, do this here so we uh, um, don't have to do anything. We already have it from version control. Uh, we don't have to create a new CMake project since we already have a CMake project. So all we have to do here is open that project and we're going to go to our documents folder and then there's the DBC demo and that's all we need and now CLine will go through and uh, load the components and uh, will actually run CLine and uh, let's just um, disable the tips on startup. So um, what you're seeing now is that uh, um, it uh, sees that this is a, a basically a GitHub project that loads the uh, uh, readme markdown file here. And so something went wrong with our toolchain, which is somewhat surprising. So let's go ahead and uh, configure the toolchain. I think this is just because uh, we um, don't have the uh, I don't know where the toolchain went that we created earlier, but as we already know, um, we can do it again. It's not uh, big enough that we have all the things installed. So we add a MinGW toolchain, um, and uh, we'll have to again point it to the um, um, Qt directory, and then the tools, and then the MinGW C730 underscore 64, and uh, this will Check the toolchain, and uh, everything should be in good working order now. And um, now it uh, loads the CMake project. Um, in the background, you can see now the output here that it finds the compilers, it finds all the dependencies, and the configuration has been successful. So. Um, what has uh, happened? Let's uh, look at this. So the project structure is here. Uh, you see that uh, um, CMake uh, or CLine has created a, um, a directory called CMake Build Debug, and uh, that directory uh, will contain all the built artifacts. Um, it is properly ignored by Git. We've set it up like this, and uh, we can now actually build and run our uh, software. So the main project is the payroll executable um, and uh, we can just look at uh, real quick at the uh, uh, main file that uh, in this case does nothing because it's just the starting point for uh, an uh, assignment so uh, but uh, it's a complete valid program so it should run and execute and do nothing so let's do this and it will hopefully build all the Files. So uh, here comes the social security number library. It's a single file, so now it's uh, created the social security number uh, number library. Um, now comes the um, uh, libraries for the uh, um, different classes that the payroll uh, system uses um, and uh, these are um, libraries because then uh, it's easier to uh, build unit tests around them and uh, then um, the um, program now has executed. Uh, let's go back to the messages real quick and see what else has been done. Uh, it also has uh, um, built the uh, 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 exception enabled uh, assertion library that uh, we've created based on boost, it created the payroll executable, and um, it indeed has run the payroll executable. Again, it, however, doing nothing. Um, 
So, um, admitting, however, that our two chain works, we've got everything in place. It found Qt, it found Boost. Um, we still had to uh, uh, recreate the MinGW um, compiler tool chain real quick in uh, C line, which was, however, um, not a big problem because we've already done this before and you've seen how simple this is once you know uh, how this works. And um, so that's the uh, um, um, debug configuration and this is uh, uh, right now all we need. We have additional configurations that we can do for, for instance, a release build or um, a uh, um, 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 minimized size uh, release. But uh, um, for now, uh, this is uh, uh, working just fine. And uh, we seem to have had success with building this. So our toolchain is complete, finally. <laughs>